Now, we all know that 2020 certainly has presented some unique and sustained challenges for a lot of individuals in this country, around the world, and in this country especially, for a lot of smaller businesses. Because when you think about it, the folks in Washington don't care about the average Joe or Jane or the small business. They care about the corporate donors, and we see that play out all the time. So it's already a challenging economic environment, which is beyond questionably true. But some businesses have found ways to persevere and adjust and adapt. Some are thriving. Some have adapted and are at least surviving with the hope of better days to come. And I certainly would like to give credit to All Elite Wrestling and AEW's ability to kind of adapt and survive. I don't know that you could say they're truly thriving? They're certainly not making as much money as they could if we were in a non-pandemic state, a non-lockdown state, but, you know, for a company that, you know, was only in its fifth or sixth month of existence to then be impacted with lockdowns to where they couldn't have full sets of fans come to the arenas, whether at Daily Plaza or other places, do shows on the road, like, these were places and opportunities that this company could have made money and that's not available in 2020. You could say, well, they've got a billionaire's backing, which helps. Yeah, but uh, WCW used to have Ted Turner's backing and eventually that didn't matter. Different circumstances, situation, I grant you, but that in and of itself doesn't automatically guarantee success. But that said, AEW, more than a year after its founding, in the height of a pandemic that still hasn't gone away, you know, they're, they're succeeding. They're at least surviving. And everybody involved deserves credit for that. You know, because it's not easy. Certainly it wasn't as planned, but, you know, sometimes the key to success is being able to uh, be an early adopter of change and, and embrace it and adapt. If you don't adapt in this world, you will eventually die. And that's what COVID did for a lot of these businesses. Let's be clear. A lot of these businesses, especially big box retailers, that went away, that declared bankruptcy, that closed up shop. This was just an acceleration of the inevitable, what happened in 2020. A lot of these businesses were already heading down that path. This just sped up the process, really. Put them out of their misery, if you will. So it's been very good to see. And, you know, with that brings some hope that we've got a second major wrestling company now, like legitimately, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing for fans. It's a good thing for wrestlers. It's frankly a good thing for both promotions, even if they don't always view it that way. It absolutely is. It beyond a shadow of a doubt unequivocally is. But when I look at AEW and I look at them and what they're doing, one thing that frustrates me with them sometimes is they get way too worried about what everybody else is doing, namely Vince and WWE, or in this case, their competition on Wednesday night, NXT, and potentially open up the door to take the eye off of the ball of what's most important, which is what they're doing. If you were, you think about it, Simon Sinek talks about the finite and infinite game. And when you think about the finite game, you're, you're talking about competing against somebody else, competing against somebody else. And if you beat them and you no longer have any competition, then what do you go from there? Because you've based everything that you've done as an operation, as a business, around beating the competition. Like, we want to be number one. Okay, well, what does number one mean? Like, how do you define number one? Whereas if you're playing an infinite game and you want to continue to grow your audience and you want to consistently achieve 1 million viewers each week and maybe 600,000 viewers in the key 1849 demographic and you want to continue to build and grow your success from there, you want to launch a video game, you want to do all these other things, like think about 2021, potentially being able to start bringing some more fans in and doing bigger shows and bigger places, like that's the infinite game. So if you have any lulls or any downturns in business, you can still keep your eye on the prize. You still have something to put your goals towards. You still have a vision. You still have a dream. You still have a place that you want to be. You're not worried about other factors that you really can't control. You're only focusing on what you can control, which is ultimately the game that you want to be playing. So when I see Tony Khan, um, who's in charge of AEW ultimately, uh, tweet what he did yesterday, or excuse me, on uh, Thursday, December 3rd, 
the day after this most recent week's episode of Dynamite. It concerns me a little bit. And I really want Tony Khan and AEW to stop talking about, stop thinking about, stop bothering about WWE and especially NXT. Here's Tony Khan's tweet. He said, thank you, great fans who made AEW Dynamite Winner is Coming a huge, huge success for AEW and TNT drama. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly fine. We got our best demo rating of 2020. Eh, can we leave the ratings talk to the marks and the dirt sheets? Really? Like, if anything, this just speaks more to the biggest marks of all when it comes to wrestling are those that are actually in wrestling. These are the types of tweets you would expect to see from Marks. Tony Khan is a mark. He's a money mark. He's a wrestling mark. And I'm not saying that's fundamentally wrong, but you know, your perspective should be a little different. We should not be talking about these things. Like he says, hey, we've got a new AEW champion in Kenny Omega. Nothing wrong with that. It happened on the show. And an indelible memory with Sting's arrival. It certainly was. It absolutely was. And if your tweet stopped right there, even with the talk about the best demo rating of 2020, I can live with that. Like the, I don't fundamentally see too much wrong with that. And everything else, you're talking about how great the show was, and you're recapping some of the big highlights and things that happened, giving some impetus for folks to potentially tune in and watch next week. That's perfectly fine. But then you got to keep going, don't you, Tony? And he goes, plus one the night. And he gives AEW's overall viewership and their performance in the 18 to 49 demographic and then NXT's overall ratings, performance, or viewership numbers and their 18 to 49 performance. And just why? Just hard stop. Because number one, wasn't it just last week basically the two shows were tied? Number two, you know, NXT was just a kind of a standard, regular, boring-ass, typical NXT show. Whereas AEW was doing this Winter is Coming special that you've been hyping up for weeks. You threw a World Championship match in there. You had the debut of freaking Sting. Like, you probably should have smashed them by more than you actually did. So how much is it really to brag about? Like, if you're going to base yourself off of the competition, then we go there and we look and we say, you're not exactly knocking it out of the park your damn self. You can talk about how much better you're doing in the demos. You can talk about the demo god, Chris Jericho, and you can talk about the demo mark, Dave Meltzer and Alvarez and everybody else, but the reality is it's not that much better. It's better, but it's not that much better. So let's be careful getting too much into that. Number three, and, and, and here's the key thing, you're still not at a million viewers. It's still not holding that consistently. Like even if you say, hey, our debut episode, we peaked at 1.4 plus million viewers, great. Over a year plus later, you're still not getting to a million consistently. Even if you assume that first episode, you're going to see some natural drop-off. Like, you're lucky most weeks to get 800,000 or 900,000 views. Like, this was, a, this was a good week, and you spent weeks building up to this. And you threw multiple things at it. Like, if we talk about this just purely from a competition standpoint, this doesn't nearly look as good as you want to make it because number four, most importantly of all AEW, Tony Khan, this is your A show. This is your marquee big show every week. Dynamite's it for you. You can talk about dark, but Dynamite is it. That's your crown jewel. That's your franchise piece. Meanwhile, WWE is trotting out there their number three show. So if anything, by continuing to bring up NXT and talking about how you're beating NXT, if anything, it's associating you more with minor league level performance than major league performance, because most wrestling fans are going to know NXT is the minor leagues for the WWE brand and roster. It absolutely is. And the numbers also prove that out and show it. Furthermore, you're talking about if you can barely beat them, then what the hell does that make your product by association? You see how that can be a little dangerous? bringing up these demo talks and bringing up these ratings talks when you're comparing it against another company's third wrestling show? This would be like WWE taking SmackDown and comparing it against the ratings of AEW Dark. You get what I mean? It's just not a great basis for yourself when trying to determine success. And I don't think it gives you nearly the good optics that you might believe that it does, Tony. Why can't you just focus on the good things that are happening with your brand? 
Don't allow WWE to live rent-free in your mind. It's outside of the trying to counter-program you with NXT, like, they're so focused on doing their own damn thing, they're not really paying that much attention to you. I promise you, they're not. It's just like any other relationship when it ends. You think about it. Whoever wins in terms of the breakup is the person that gets over it the first and the person that allows the other person to live less rent-free in their mind. That's who wins. And believe me, life is all about wins and losses, and we all know that. And that's why you're talking about your competition relative to NXT versus your AEW Dynamite performance. But again, I promise you, stop talking about them. Like, you should be trying to gear yourself up towards focusing on, okay, we averaged 913,000 viewers last week. How do we get to a million? Who gives a shit if NXT turned it around and in a year they're at 1.5 million viewers? Who cares? Let's get to a million first. Let's focus on us. Let's focus on what we could do, how could we can make more interesting, compelling storylines, how more interesting, compelling characters. How can we draw in new fans instead of trying to recycle through the same hardcore fans that are going to limit us in terms of our growth and overall earnings potential? Like These are the conversations I feel like that should be had internally. And maybe some of them are, but when you're talking about what's being projected to the outside world, to me that is a reflection of the reality of what the talk is inside of the company. And, and the priorities to me are just off here, Tony. They're just wrong. Like, focus on how you're going to get to a million viewers first. And think about how you're going to consistently average that. And then think about how you're going to get more mainstream exposure and mainstream acceptance. Like, looking at Sting and when he makes his debut and ESPN and all these other outlets are running it in. He's trending number one worldwide on Twitter. You know, let's focus on how do we take that and that big get and use him not necessarily in a wrestling capacity, but how do we incorporate him to give the rub to others to where we can help make other big stars? That's what you should be focusing on. Please stop tweeting about ratings. You can say, hey, we had a great night and ratings were great. Okay, fine. Like even then, but when you start getting into the specifics and comparing demos, like it looks like you're trying to justify yourself against Big Brother. It looks kind of pathetic. And yes, that's coming from a, a dude that's almost 40 talking about wrestling here on YouTube. I know what pathetic looks like. And for Tony Khan, doing this as a guy in charge of a major wrestling company, is kind of pathetic. Nothing wrong with talking about what happened on the show and how great of a success it is and talk about your best days are ahead of you. That's perfectly fine. That's the type of professional, business-like behavior I would expect from somebody that is properly playing the infinite game. When you do this type of finite game crap, it leads you to nowhere but disaster. It's what happened to ECW. It's what happened to WCW. And frankly, even though they still exist, obviously, and still enjoy a certain level of success, WWE played the finite game for so long, competing head up against WCW in the Monday Night Wars, that they never truly have recovered because they never really found that vision of what the infinite game was. Like at least back in the 80s when they had the global expansion you know, Vince had a vision of he was taking his product international, you know, national and then international. And you can say, well, he was competing against others and putting them out. Yes, he was. However, there was still a bigger goal in mind. He was trying to do something. This was just a stepping stone to that. But here now you're just talking about flat out. Just don't. Stop talking about WWE. Stop referencing WWE. Stop bringing up NXT. Stop comparing ratings. Just stop, stop, stop all of this markish-ass behavior that doesn't help you be as successful as you possibly can be. Take Wednesday night and make it your own damn night. Make it your damn play thing. And put out the best, most compelling product that you possibly can on a weekly basis. I promise you, you're not going to do that, Tony, as long as you continue to tweet about damn ratings each week. 